Welcome to this video on using the TI-83 or 84 graphing calculator to graph. So we're going to start by exploring the different buttons that we use for graphing and then we're going to look at the three steps to graph and then finally we're going to learn how to use the trace and table features. Let's begin by looking at the buttons. So this first button right here, the Y equals button, is where you go to enter functions that you want to graph. The second button, this window button, this tells your graphing calculator where you want your axes to start and stop. And if we look at uh, the graph here, we can see that for this particular graph, our graph starts over here at negative 10 on the X, and the maximum X is 10 and then we have tick marks every one unit and then for our Y's, our Y's also go from negative 10 up to a maximum of 10 and we again have a, a tick mark length of 1. In this zoom button we find some preset windows and ways to different ways to build windows. The trace button, this is uh, how we move along the curve that we've got graphed and this graph button, button will produce a graph when you've just entered it in the Y equals screen. Let's go back to the window button. So once again, the window tells you where your function is going to be graphed. So for this window that goes from negative 10 to 10, our graph starts over here at our X min of negative 10 and it goes up to our X max of 10 and we have an X scale or a distance between our tick marks of 1 and then we have the same values for our Y's. So we have a Y min of negative 10 so down here we start down here at negative 10 and we go up to a maximum of 10 and then we have tick marks every one. So we can set all of these numbers however we want. We're going to leave this X res alone. Next, let's look at the zoom button. So the zoom button has some preset windows. So right here, zoom decimal, this gives us a preset window that when we press trace, we, we jump to nice um, decimal numbers. We have the standard window, that's the negative 10 to 10 window that we just looked at in the previous window screen. We also have some other windows that are useful. If you're in the stat class, this zoom stat window will produce a window based on the data that you have in your lists. And zoom fit is another one we'll use on occasion. And this one's super useful if you don't have a good sense for where the Y values are going to be. Next, let's look at the steps to graphing. So the first thing that you need to do when graphing is press the Y equals button and enter the function. So let's go ahead and do that. What I want to do is graph this function down here, Y equals 3X minus 2. So we're going to press Y equals, and then I'm going to enter in 3X minus 2. So I just 3, and then I can use this X right here to you for my variable, X subtract if by chance up here you have one of these plots highlighted, what I want you to do is go up, move your cursor up so that it's on top of that plot and then press enter to turn it off. Sometimes that will interfere with our ability to graph. So in general you want to have your plots off. Okay, so that's step one. We enter our function. Step two, we need to set the window by doing one of three things. So first we can set it manually. We can press window and actually just type in values here. Second, we can use a preset window by um, pressing zoom and then um, choosing one of these presets. Or our third option is to have the calculator build a window for us using um, another of the zoom features. What I want to do for this particular example is use this zoom standard. So I'm going to zoom to the standard viewing window. So I'm going to go down here to standard and I'm going to press enter. And over here we can see our graph being produced. So this is the line y equals 3x minus 2. If we press window we can see that we have that negative 10 to 10 window. 
Next, let's take that same function and instead of graphing in the standard window, I want to graph using the decimal viewing window. So I'm going to press zoom again and choose a different one of our preset windows. I'm going to choose zoom decimal and press enter. And we see the same function, but it's a little closer view of it. If we press window, we can see that it chooses slightly different view values for our x min, x max, and y min, and y max. And these might seem kind of funny values to choose, but they're based on the uh, number of pixels in the calculator. And if you have a, like a TI Inspire, these numbers are going to be different. But the cool thing about this particular window is, I'm going to press um, graph so I can see my graph again. Um, the cool thing about this window is what happens when we trace along our curve. So let's go ahead and press trace. So if we press trace, we can see we have this um, little cursor, or I call it a spider, and if I press the left and right arrows here, I can move along my curve. So as I move to the right, I can see, like for instance here, my x value at this point is 0.5 and my y value is negative 0.5. And I can move along my curve and get nice decimal numbers. Let's see what happens if we go back to that standard window. So let's press zoom again and go back to this standard window. Press the trace button again and now when I move along my curve, do you see how my decimal, my values for my x and my y are these big long decimal numbers? These are uh, just not as easy to work with if you're trying to produce a graph on paper. So let's go back to that zoom decimal window. So zoom and then choose 4. And let's press trace again so that you can see that, definitely see that difference. So see how these are nice decimal numbers? Okay, now suppose that I want to go to a specific spot. Maybe I want to see the value at x equals 1.5. I can just type in, I can either scroll to the right like this, or I can just type in 1.5. So I can just type 1.5 and then press enter. Now this only works if I'm, I've already pressed trace. So it jumps right to that spot. If, if I'm not in that trace mode, watch what happens. So if I'm, I'm, I'm pressed graph again. I'm not in trace mode. If I type 1.5 right now, notice I, I know that I'm not in that trace mode because I don't see the x and y values down here, but if I type 1.5 right now, it shoots me back out to my um, home screen. So let's, let's go back to graph. So if I want to see the x and y values, I first have to press trace. So I'm at 1.5. Maybe I want to do um, 2.5 and I can see the y value. I can no longer see the spider because it's way up here at 5.5. Now, I can only choose values to type in that are in my window. So for instance, if I wanted to find the y value when x equals 5, I can't type in 5 because it'll say error. It's because that value was outside my window. So let's it and graph again. So see if you can find the y value for when x equals 0.8. Did you get it? So how did you do it? Did you scroll to the left until you got over to 0.8 like this? And got a y value of 0.4? Or did you just type in 0.8 and jump directly to it? Either way works. Next, let's look at another way for pulling off values for our function. What I want to do is I want to use go to the table. So our calculator has a table feature as a second option for this graph. But before I go to the table, I'm going to go to the table setup. So I'm going to press second and then window. And in here, your values might look slightly different. For what I want to do, I don't care what these values are, and I'm going to go down here and make sure that my independent variable is on ask. 
I'm going to leave my dependent variable on auto, but I'm going to make my independent variable on ask. And if I, it, it might have looked like this. And what I do is I scroll, I put my cursor on the ask and then press enter. I want you to make sure that your, your table set setup looks like mine. So I need these two values to be the same. I don't care about these two. And then once you have that, we're going to press second and then graph. Now my grapher was already in the ask mode, but you may have come up with a blank table here. So it might have looked like um, I can delete I can delete these values by just pressing this delete button. So your table might have looked like this. So let's see if we can find the y values for these x values over here in this table. Give it a shot. One thing to remember is that when you type in negative 2, you have to use this negative down here, not the subtraction sign. So t type in negative 2, press enter, and it gives us the y value. So finish this up. Did you get these values? Next, let's see how we can use our graphing calculator to automatically generate a table for us. So let's go back to this table set feature. So we're going to go second window. And this time, I want it to be on auto. And suppose I want to start calculating values at, say, negative 2. And I want to find the values every 0.5. So if I put in 0.5, let's see what this does for us. So I'm going to go back to table, so I'm going to go second graph again. And you'll see here, our table starts at negative 2, and then it jumps up by a unit of 0.5 each time. And if we just scroll down here, it'll just keep generating more values in our table. I tend to prefer to want to choose the values and so I like to keep it on ask, but you can do what you like. The last thing I want to do is graph one last function. So I want to graph y equals 2x subtract 42 in the standard viewing window. So remember the steps to graphing, you're first going to press y equals and enter the function and then you're going to choose um, in this particular case I said graph it into the zoom standard window so you're going to use option 2 and zoom standard so go ahead and give this a try when you press y equals we already have this old function in here and you can just press the clear button to get rid of it okay now notice that when we do this I don't see anything on my screen that doesn't necessarily mean I did something wrong it just may mean that this function doesn't appear in this window. And if we look at our function y equals 2x minus 42 and use what we know about this type of function, we know that this is a line and the y-intercept of this line is way down at negative 42. So that's way down below our the bottom of our window here. So this particular viewing window doesn't work for this function. So we have two options. We can either set it manually or I'll show you how to use um, one of the other zoom features. So let's set it manually. So we know that our y values start at 0 at negative 42. So let's maybe go from negative um, 80 up to 20, let's say. And notice that this span here from negative 80 up to 20 that's, you know, a hundred values there. So if we choose a Y scale of one, we're not going to be able to see any distance between our tick marks. Let's see how that looks. So let's press graph. Notice I now see a, a line. That's good news. But do you see how on the Y axis here we just have a solid thick line? That's because we can't see any distance between our tick marks. Let's go back to window. And we want to see maybe um, 20 tick marks, so you know, or 10 to 20 tick marks. So let's choose um, making our y scale of five. So that means every five units we're going to have a tick mark. Let's press graph again to see what this looks like. Okay, so this function looks better. I, I can see that I have a line. 
But one thing that I like to see when I'm graphing lines is I like to see the y-intercept and I like to see the x-intercept. So our x-intercept is over here off on the right side of our screen. So let's see if we can change that x value to come up with a, a little, slightly better view of our graph. So let's press window again. And let's make our x max be, let's go up to say 40. What might you choose for an x scale here? Would 1 be appropriate? What do you think? Let's do 5 again. We could do 10 if we wanted. We, these numbers don't have to be the same. The x scale and the y scale don't have to be the same. Let's press graph. Okay, so this looks like a much nicer view. I can see my y intercept, I can see my x intercept, and I have a good sense of what my my function looks like. Let's look at another way to build this window. Th this was a process of tinkering sort of to, to build this window. Let's go back to where we started at by using the zoom and standard. And this we're going to go back to the, the bad window where we saw nothing. Okay, so we see nothing. We can see we, we know that our, our values here from negative 10 to, to 10, the, the y values are, are too small here. But one option is to press zoom and then choose this zoom fit option zero. And what this will do is it'll build a window that corresponds to the y values for the x values that are chosen. Let, let's see what, what happens. Okay, so I've we have we went from negative 10 to 10 and so now we can see uh, our curve here let's see what it shows for a window for us so it went from negative 62 to 20 negative 22 these numbers it came up with by figuring out what y values our function took on between negative 10 and 10 so when I use this zoom fit option it can be really handy with certain types of functions where we don't have a good sense of what y values um, our function takes on but I often have to go in and tinker with it so let's say okay I, I this this looks I, I can see my function but maybe I, I want to change this maybe from negative 62 let's just go from negative 60 and I know that I want to see a little bit higher so let's go up to um, let's go up to positive 20 and I know that I have to change my y scale let's change it to 10 this time let's see if our graph looks better here okay so this looks a little better but we still can't see that x-intercept so I would still need to go back in and, and fix this so maybe go up to let's say what did we do last time 40 let's go by 5 and here this looks like a nice graph. So there's no one way to choose a window. Oftentimes it requires a bit of experimentation with different windows. There's a few more videos in this series where we look at other features that our calculator has for our graphing screen. Hope you check them out.